All right, welcome to the podcast. I believe this might be episode number seven that we're recording today. We have Andre from Floium. Andre, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me here again. Fantastic. Now, for people who don't know, you, you've been on the email marketing scene for, for a long time. I was saying just before we actually started this call, it was your videos on YouTube that actually taught me a lot of what I know now. And those videos would have been out like four or five years ago. So you, you've probably seen like the evolution of email marketing in a lot of ways uh, change, but also stay the same. What, what do you think like the role of an email marketer was and is now and hasn't changed at all? Because it feels like it's become a lot more of like a holistic skill set that people are needing to have where it's a lot more number crunching. It's less just pumping out a newsletter here and there. Have you seen anything like that change as time has gone on? Sure. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much for such a big compliment. It's extremely <laughs> nice to, to, to hear, you know, because when you pump the content, uh, like I was doing even some of videos daily and when you put so much effort and you don't see any kind of results for like, Two years, three years, it's like your hands, like, like you, you know, like you, you feel this, like, discouraged. But it's, it's, it's extremely nice to hear that they help you to either to build your business. Uh, in terms of uh, email marketer, so how it changed? Actually, I don't see it changed a lot, but I can see and tell you there's more email marketers out there in the industry because in the past it was almost non-existent industry or it was a such a small percentage of from overall overall digital marketing industry that it's like nobody was talking about email marketing uh, there was few businesses who are doing email marketing uh email marketing so email marketing is a retention of uh, is a part of retention marketing and Everybody's focusing on acquisition of acquisition of new clients. And there's only a few businesses focusing on in percentage wise. I'm saying, yes, there is a lot of people focusing on retention, but if you compare it to percentage, it's only a few companies who focus on retention. And this is, I mean, and from retention marketing, email is the biggest chunk of it. What was it like? those you know you said when you first started there was you know hardly any agencies out there or, or people that specialize in email marketing what was it like trying to convince businesses that email marketing is like a massively important part of any especially direct to consumer brands marketing strategy and do you still kind of run up against some of those some of those walls like i still talk to people now where they're like you know what email marketing doesn't work i don't want to spam my audience uh, people just delete those emails what was it like trying to convince people in the early days? Um, I didn't have much convincing to, to, to do because all leads in the past were inbound. They came to me from referrals or from like videos from content they create. So they came to me with a problem. They say, I want to do email marketing or my email marketing does not work. So mm -hmm. I, there were not much convincing however there was a lot of convincing in terms of implementing my strategy because when i show our fundamental uh, strategy fundamental flows like abandoned car welcome and so forth uh, consists of from like between 40 to 60 emails and when i showed them them this kind of strategy clients like whoa i don't want to spam my people as you said and now I need to convince and not convince them. I need to sell the strategy and explain them it's in their best interest to have this kind of strategy implemented. And just to be clear to, to, to your listeners, I'm not saying we are sending those 60 emails in one week or one month. People go through different uh, customer journeys and receive different kinds of emails. But the overall fundamental fundamental strategy was without, without any add-ons like loyalty program about like without any of those fundamental is like around like 50 40 to 60 emails in automations let's let's dive into that a little bit more let's talk a little bit more about that fundamental like uh, fundamental flows and does that also include like some basic campaign strategies around there as well 
So campaign strategy, I mean, uh, depends on the clients. So we are email marketing agency. We serve uh, e-commerce brands mostly, uh, but sometimes uh, brands come to us and say, we are, we, we want to do campaigns on our own and you are responsible only for automations. And later they realize that they don't understand email marketing and we, we do campaigns for them as well. Um, Sorry, what was your question? No, that's fine. <laughs> it's my eyes. You're in my eyes. I can. <laughs> it's fine. What I was saying is like, what comprises of like that fundamental strategy from like a flow perspective? Then. Sure, sure, sure. And um, uh, listen, I, I I know you're probably working mostly on Clavio. That's why you call it flow, flow, flow. But for, yeah. yeah, but for 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 your audience, it's not only flows. It's in general, it's automations. In different ESPs, it's called differently flows, sequences, drip automations. So basically, it's a welcome automation, abandoned cart automation. If it's possible to do browser automation, uh, went back, uh, went back, uh, sunset uh, or re engagement flows. So those are fundamental. And I think I have on YouTube the like, because a lot of brands ask me, like, oh, what do I need to, when I start with email marketing, what kind of automations I need? And I, rec I believe many people ask, so I record the video explaining those. Do you want to go deeper and talk about the emails we use or? You know, I think, I think that's, that's, that's great. I mean, those, those capture like a majority of like the customer life cycle for, for you know, pretty generic interaction with a business. Um, I, I would like to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, email design fundamentals. I mean, one of the good things that you guys do on your YouTube channel is you, you break down some of like the trends that are happening with, with email marketing in terms of look and feel of certain emails and also like the interactive nature that some emails can now have. Have you seen, um, I, mean, I mean, have you seen anything kind of shift quite significantly when it comes to the design and layout of email marketing templates? layout no because there's a kind of um uh winning layout structure mm -hmm. of the email so i don't think people play much with a layout however in terms of design trends uh, i mean simplicity it's it's a big thing for the last few years uh, the simplicity of emails like their clean and simple design not was not overloaded with many like graphics maybe of the a product as a hero image or a person included in that the picture and and call to like short this tagged description and call to actions so I, I the biggest thing is um uh I, as i said simplicity also optimization for dark mode uh so sometimes mm -hmm. uh, design have that um like uh outline white outline and sometimes it's not visible on the white screen but on the black black screen it's very visible and easy e easy yeah. to read and the the third thing that i would say uh i see a lot of brands are testing or playing with uh, text based versus designed like um why because deliverability is changing all in the past it was oh Gmail or Yahoo updated their algorithm, so we need to do something. It was like maybe every other year or every three years. Now they do changes like every almost every quarter or once uh, every six months. So deliverability is a big issue nowadays, and a lot of brands testing different things to improve their deliverability. And text-based emails uh, are better for engagement. What? what are the factors that you kind of factor in when it comes to deciding if it's going to be an HTML or a plain text email? Is it the nature of the message? Is it the, cause if I think about it for myself, right, for my clients who are in the B2B space, I lean quite heavily on plain text. And then I try and move away from HTML just because I'm trying to start like an actual conversation. I'm less trying to sell in those emails. Same again in like the, the sunset flow or, or sometimes even the post purchase thank you flow for my direct to consumer clients we are using plain text emails just to really elicit that like one-on-one -on -one conversation feel with like the founder or the marketing manager. Do you have any, any, any tips for where like somebody could actually add those emails and where is best practice? Um, I like your explanation a lot. So you need to have uh, 
branded emails to show that you're a professional, show that you are a business. But next was a text-based e emails where it looks like a person sent it. So is there a founder or a salesperson or account manager send it out? Those emails can be um, text-based, but if it's generic message, oh, we were like, welcome to our company. This is our mission. This is our statement. This is our product lines. Those kind of emails, which are very generic about your, more about your company than about them, the recipient, those can be branded design, nice, nice looking HTML design. But if it's, if I'm talking to you like, hey, let's talk. Hey, what kind of questions you have? How can we support you? Those kind of things where you expect them to reply to your email, I would, uh, I would recommend to make it as a text-based emails. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some really good success with um, actually split testing, even with the abandoned cart. Like you think abandoned cart, like amazing, have a dynamic product image in there and display the item, but the uptick in deliverability we see, you know, moving from like a 40 to 50, sometimes 60% open rate up to 80 from a plain text, just, yeah, it can, it can beat out the, um, the decrease in sales from like a conversion perspective that a plain text would offer versus an HTML one. So yeah, it flips it around. So I, I like, I like what you just said. And I think for your audience, it's important to remember split testing is important, but what I constantly see people split testing, oh, red button column versus blue button color. I mean, I like what you're doing. And I, I mean, I think it's important, but those kind of split testing is important for like massive enterprise level companies because the color the thing matter there for smaller brands under i would say under even 10 millions you need to do radical extreme split testing like tax based versus design or like uh, uh, the entire blue email versus like white email mm -hmm. or some, some something like extremely radi radical or like only one image versus like very long email with a lot of images with a lot of like uh product blocks and see what uh your audience re responding to yeah i think you're right it's like starting like super wild out the box at the start and then gradually honing it in you know i don't know if they can see yeah yeah nailed it nailed it um yeah 100 percent, man i fully i fully agree with you i i'd like to um talk you know so they got the email marketing stuff as well but you know for for a lot of people listening to this uh it, it's a split between business owners who own their own e-commerce store and then also other email marketing agencies um as as well so i'd love to hear like more around around the business side about about flowium and like kind of the direction that, that you guys are taking so, so from what I hear, you're in the process of um, acquiring other agencies as well to grow your agency. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I mean, this is the plan, like uh, just full transparency. We did not, we were under contract with a few agencies, but uh, didn't close it yet. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. And so the direction is, are you guys going to stay a email marketing agency? Are you guys going to expand to... Uh, to, to offer other services because i've always found like it's been so useful saying i'm just an email marketing agency we just do email marketing and sms but... at this moment we are staying in retention space and it's it's email sms um might be like push uh, push messages might be direct mail but we will be focusing on the retention only uh, in the next three years Anything like after three years, I cannot say. I mean, yes, I, as any other entrepreneur, I want to grow. I want to add uh, Facebook, TikTok advertising. I want to do X, Y, and Z, but this, those are just a kind of some kind of dream, dreams and it's not on our horizon yet. It's, we have only three three year plan at this moment. Gotcha, yeah. Retention, yeah, fantastic. And when you when you guys first started out, like I'm guessing, can, can you give me the story of like how 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 your agency kind of came to be what it is? You know, like was it was it the classic, you know, dude, dude in the home office, baby, 
and then kind of moved on to, to just gradually grow and grow and grow? Or was it, you know, you and a few business partners? What was the, the story of how you guys started the agency? I so I start always started with this like I created this business by accident, hundred percent accident, and that accident happened from me surviving. Um, so I used to work in corporate America, total different field. I, I used to work as a technology engineer, but not a, like a software engineer. Uh, we I worked in the uh, company. We were designing telecommunication system, security system, and audiovisual system for uh, commercial spaces like skyscrapers. Uh, one of our project was a uh, Freedom Tower, the, the the building what stands where Twin Towers used to stand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so after that, I, I quit my job. I, it was not fulfilling. After eight years, I figured, and uh, I quit my job, and I didn't know I didn't know what to do. But when I was working in the corporate job, I on the side I had my own website. Uh, it, it was for Ukrainian immigrants um, here in US who come to US and I was sharing information about how to open credit card, how to buy a car and so forth. And but I didn't know how to guide them to like to like somebody who just came to US and somebody who lives here for two years, you know. So I use email marketing channel to 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 create different journeys for those people. So when I quit my job, I didn't know what to do. So I start freelancing on Upwork. And why I start freelancing? Because I, as a family, we run out of money and I need to do something. And I was offering all kinds of services on Upwork. I was like Facebook ads, WordPress development, all the things. Did I know how to do it? No, but I probably knew something better than people who were looking for the, those kind of freelancers. Uh, and then I realized on Upwork, they give you estimates how much people are paying for uh, email marketing. And I'm like, everybody knows how to do email marketing. It's so easy. You just like kind of design those automations. It's not, it's not hard at all. So I kind of developed it myself, but I saw the people pay around like $46 an hour for that. I'm like, oh, I need to do email marketing. And then, so there's two benefits. I was located in US. I mean, I live in New York. So I located in New York uh, and people sometimes were looking specifically on Upwork for people who located in US. And there was almost close to non competitions on, on Upwork for email marketing when I started back in 2000, early 2017. So I started to get a lot of like tractions. Like my first project I did for $50. And it was between eight to 10 hours I spent it. So you can do yeah, the math nice. how much it was per hour. Uh, but that uh, that project gave me first review. So I started to do more and more and more and I was servicing all kinds of clients. And the first project I did on Clavio for e-commerce, I'm like, it was a huge aha moment for like, oh, so this is what they pay me, whatever they pay me, $500, $600. And I made them like, I don't know, like $5,000. And I'm like, oh, and like, so it's, I should focus on that, this kind of client because it's so easy to show them my value. Yeah. They pay me this, I can show the return right away. So I start to narrow my focus on e commerce. And people start to recommend, and my prices were always low. As people start to recommend me to each, to another. So there was a point in my business career or whatever uh where i had 20 20 to 24 clients that i was managing myself no help at all and it was so stressful i was i'm not kidding yes there was a lot of money cash flow at that moment because i was keeping everything to myself but my sleep my fitness i i think i, I gained like 50 pounds so it's like what 25 kilos approximately and then i realized i need to change something so then i i heard the concept <laughs> after doing this for two years so i heard the concept of agency so i started to learn about like what agency is so and then i start to build the company the agency and this is where we are now I can't imagine having to manage 24 clients on, on my own. So you were designing the emails, writing them as well, all that stuff. 
No, uh, no, no, just to be clear, uh, I, I'm not a copywriter. Uh, English is my second language. I'm originally from Ukraine. Um, and I am not a designer. I can like do good aesthetics, but I'm not a designer. So mostly I was responsible for for email marketing strategy, technical setup, and I was managing copywriters, designers who work for, for the client. Yeah, got you, got you. Yeah, I imagine it would have been, yeah, great taking all the money in, but then you have like panic attacks at like 11 p.m. and then <laughs> it's just not even worth it, yeah. So I didn't, just to make my long story short, I did not plan to open any business. I was a freelancer and I was happy to be a freelancer. And I did not plan to create an agency. And I didn't know what agency is. And even when we, when I opened my agency or business, whatever you call it, I call it email marketing NYC. And I didn't even think about it. Like, I do email marketing. I live in New York. So cool name is NYC. And this is the name. And when I hired the team and we were kind of more professional, I start to hate my name. That's why we rebranded in 2019, I believe, to Floyo. Yeah, fantastic. That's an awesome story. I mean, the growth that you guys have had as well has just been shot up as well. I've, I've been keeping an eye on you guys for like since 20, God, 2020 is when I first came across you guys. And so you all have been. So in 2020, we were a team of, I believe, 18. And now we surpassed like 85 five employees uh, yeah just ramping up man what was the what was the biggest transition moving from i guess like that contractor to agency owner how did your role shift from uh yeah amazing question amazing because i, I was have had the same question when it's like how can i handle like 20 20 plus clients myself so uh, imagine a sun system, uh, like the planet, sorry, planet system. We have you have a sun, and all planets like go around the sun. So when you freelancer or when you start your business, this is kind of the model. So you are in the center, and everybody doesn't matter how many people you hire. Typically, it's everybody around you. It's like it's like 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 ecosystem. So the big shift was I paid good sum of money to another agency who was doing exactly the same thing what i was doing and i'm like hey could you please teach me how to do it so we had an engagement for three months and this guy taught me how to structure the team so now i become more like business owner or ceo of the company and i start to hire like account manager then leadership and so forth so uh, at the at the beginning it was me and then like three like three project managers as we start to grow like i still start to add more and more layers now we have kind of a lot of layers between prime and myself yeah i think that's kind of like where i'm at with with my business right now is it's kind of like um you know things have grown really quickly but moving from the, the just like you're initially just a project manager right when you're on your own and then transitioning from just being that project manager to then hiring somebody to manage the projects for you and then there's the project manager and they're managing the designer copywriter builder and then you're up here and then i feel like my role gradually where i want to take it is just to be a sales and marketing role right like i just want to be really focused on like the personal branding side of things and like getting the youtube videos out kind of like you did and Back to what you first mentioned as well, sometimes with these YouTube videos, you can feel like you're just speaking to the void, you know, where you just get like no traction, no one coming back. But um, I guess it's like a long-term effort. And that's kind of what this podcast is as well, right? Like a really long-term play that in the future, eventually things will kind of come back in and, uh, you know, circle back. So we, we, we also, I mean, we not sure if you're aware, we also have a podcast. I'm not the host mm. on, the, uh, on the podcast, but we have a podcast about email marketing. And it took us two years. I, I, I wish your podcast will start to convert much faster, but uh, it took us almost two years before we start to get any leads. And it's not high volume, but those are more more qualified and more interested people than than any other channels. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm expecting, to be honest. Like it's same with like SEO to a certain degree, right? Like just lay down the foundations and then in six months time, um, you know, it'll all pay off. But, you know, it's, it's like a digital asset, right? Like you create this asset that eventually just converts in the long run. Um, well, my friend, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, 
can let us know like where people can find you, your business, your podcast, your YouTube channel. Where's the best places to find all those things? Sure. Uh, I I mean, like we have a lot of things, but go to our website, Florium, F-L-O-W-I-U-M dot com, and you can find um, all the resources you you want or need if you want to contact me just go to linkedin i'm very active on linkedin and message me let me know where you hear about me from this podcast so i i can accept accept and we can start communication one tip that i want to give to your audience doesn't matter what kind of business they do uh, if it's the email marketing agency or the e-commerce brands um if you have zero email marketing start especially especially email marketing agency are bad with email marketing for their own business mm -hmm. and I, I i made this kind of mistake for a very very long time we, st we started doing email marketing last year uh and um, we start to see a lot but very positive return on investment like people start like responding to our emails scheduling calls and i'm like was blown away like whoa so email marketing works not only for greatly for b2c but for b2b as well so uh don't stress about perfection of your e how the email looks it can be text-based simple text-based emails but make sure you have those emails going the automation as well as campaigns getting started earlier rather than later yeah 100 percent. it's just money left on the table eh? fantastic well thank you so much for jumping on and uh, once again if you want to find anything about flowium i will have the details in the show notes just down below links will all be there and uh, thanks for coming on man thank you very much thank you for having me